So this is our Red Tone Smart Farming solution. It consists of our Red Tone Smart Farming Contro Smart Control Panel uh, that is used to display useful information to our farmers. So the system itself is designed to provide the farmer with what we term as RAR, Remote Monitoring, Automation and Remote Control. This allows the farmer to actually reduce his dependency on workers and to increase the efficiencies on the farm. So when I talk about efficiencies, we're talking about uh, the efficiency of the input in terms of water, in terms of fertilizer use, in terms of pesticide use. We also are looking at uh, reducing the amount of work that the workers have to do, whereby uh, we reduce human error and human interaction with the system so that uh, it is more consistent for the plants. So in the case of fertilizer, you are able to give the plants a more consistent level of fertilization and reduce the amount of human error that is uh, given. Yeah. So as you can see, this is our DB box or what we also call a control node. The control node allows us to manually control uh, the various systems on a farm. So for example, uh, refilling our water, uh, mixing uh, our fertilizer, uh, turning on the fertigation pump and also turning on the irrigation pump. So you are able to do things uh, either automatically through our smart control panel which also allows you to do it remote, remotely or you can be on the farm and needing to do this manually you just turn it to manual mode and you are able to turn on the various pumps so for example if I needed to turn on the irrigation pump it does so immediately yeah. so we'll turn this back on to automatic mode and you would be able to actually use your Alright, uh, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've had your uh, short break. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us still. We now move on to our next keynote speaker. Once again, feel free to type in your question in the Q&A window down below. Uh, Mr. Brijesh, are you there? Yes, hello. Alright, great, great. Thank you. Our next keynote will be presented by Mr. Brijesh Topil, Director of Strategic Partnerships, EOS Data Analytics Incorporated. He will be presenting on the topic of farms being monitored from space, the benefits of satellite remote-based sensing in uh, agriculture. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brijesh, for being here. Uh, I'll just give a little introduction to who you are. He's the Director of Strategic Partnerships at EOS, uh, a global provider of AI-powered satellite imagery analytics. Uh, he's joined EOS in 2021 and works with the company's global partners from various verticals, both existing and new. He is primarily responsible for the expansion of EOS uh, partners network and formulating partnership strategies to build a sustainable partner ecosystem. He holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Anna University, Chennai, and he brings with him over 11 years of experience in a wide spectrum of roles covering business development, technical projects implementation, and project management. The floor is yours, Mr. Brijesh. Thank you, Mr. Radza. That was a very explosive introduction that you provided to me. Thank you very much. And a warm welcome to everyone, to the viewers and the panelists here of this Smart Farming Conference. Good morning to one and all. And it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy to be a part of this conference. And uh, it's an, also an honor to be on behalf of US. I would like to convey my regards, uh, their regards. And also it's an honor to be invited to this stage to uh, make a presentation on our solutions, our capabilities, and also on our partnership. So 
before I start presenting my uh, slides, I would like to set a prelude on how satellite technology affects our daily life. So in order to understand that, I would, uh, I would go to the, like the basics of satellite, like remote sensing, uh, as we call. So in astronomy, as we say, satellites are known as heavenly objects that revolve around a planet. And with a different perspective, we can say that satellites are also artificial body that are made of special materials equipped with sensors and components to capture information. And uh, they are launched into the orbit around the Earth to which to further enhance the role of capturing information from the Earth's surface or from the objects on Earth's surface. So this concept of capturing information from a far distance is known as remote sensing. And when it comes to remote sensing through satellites, uh, there is a process of uh, capturing the difference or difference in the characteristics from the earth surface or the objects on the earth by measuring the, the amount of radiation or the, the emitted and the reflected radiation from the earth surface or the object. So this is the basis of the remote sensing principle. And we use this, we, Perhaps we might not have known much about it, but we uh, it's pretty much a part of our daily life. So the most basic function that we do on a daily basis is communication. For example, now at this moment, we are communicating through a platform. This is also an example of how satellite technology is used. The remote sensing principle of the satellite technology is used between people in different parts of the, of the world, different locations of the world to communicate with each other. So a similar concept is now slowly taking hold of the agriculture industry as well, as we call it as a dig digital agriculture revolution, in which the remote sensing satellites dedicated for agricultural crop monitoring are used to detect uh, various information or capture information, uh, such as um, the, the information or data relevant to the weather pattern, like precipitation level or the rainfall assessment, or the information related to the vegetative uh, content in the plants or the crops or even trees or the information related to the characteristics of soil or the soil profile analysis. So uh, due to in today's presentation, my topic is uh, farms being monitored from space with an emphasis on what are the benefits of uh, satellites used in the remote sensing uh, of agricul in agriculture industry. So with my presentation, I would focus more on what kind of data we capture, what kind of data we process using other additional technologies, and what are the benefits that we bring to different, uh, I would say, agricultural stakeholders. So please give me a moment, I will share my screen with you. So uh, a quick look over the content of my presentation. I will start my presentation with a brief introduction about Earth Observing System Data Analytics, and uh, in which I will cover the company background about who we are, what we do, and what are the solutions that we have developed. Then followed by uh, a quick insight into the agriculture's digital revolution and the current challenges faced by all types of economies. Then our idea about how do we monitor farms from space, the kind of data what we collect and how do we combine it with our in-house, our proprietary techniques or processes to bring out meaningful insights for the customers or the users of our solution. Then I will dive, after that, I will dive into our, one of our ready-made solutions named EOS Crop Monitoring Platform and its use cases. Then beneficiaries of our platform, the US crop monitoring platform to the agricultural stakeholders, followed by uh, an, an, an informal announcement about our partnership with Redtone and uh, the service packages that we have decided to offer. I mean, the service packages that we have planned to offer to the Malaysian customers. And uh, finally, I will sum up with some more information on custom solutions that we are able to develop 
using the satellite data and ground data. And finally, a short, a quick glance over what is our vision for the upcoming years. So a quick intro about us. EOS Data Analytics, we are a privately held company with, with our headquarters in California. And we have more than 200 employees located in US and in Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, we have our research and development center, uh, which is led by a group of five professors and 15 PhD associates. So with their help, we are able to develop uh, diverse or expert, high expertise solutions uh, for agriculture sector and to, uh, and to other sectors which are closely related to agriculture, like for example, forestry. And we work with different kinds of customers, like those we can, if we can have a broad category of such customers, they can be classified into government customers, commercial uh, companies, and even scientific and research organizations who depend on satellite data analytics to, uh, you know, to prepare their advisory or reporting for their uh, users. Then, uh, we do use the satellite data to develop solutions for different industries, but our main expertise is uh, dedicated for two industries, that is agriculture and forestry industry. More than 90% of our, the beneficiaries of our solutions, those come from agriculture sector, who are mostly smallholder farmers, input suppliers, agri-tech companies, uh, insurance companies, commodity traders, fintech or finance related or crop insurance um, corporations and so on. And with that said, a quick look into the facts, like this is as per the latest survey, like along with crop monitoring, we have two more additional products, namely forest monitoring, which is dedicated for monitoring of forest stands or forest areas across the world. Land Viewer, which is used to download high resolution images from any location in the world. And by the way, these three platforms are deployable and accessible from any point, any location in the world. So our total stats, the latest survey that we have is all of all these three products are used in more than in all 195 countries in the world, which cover around 94 million kilometers square of Earth's surface on a monthly basis. So this sums up to a total number of users of 700,000 uh, worldwide. A quick look into the current agricultural drive or the digital revolution that is happening. So the main goal of this digital revolution is to increase the food production by minimizing the resources or minimizing the inputs required for food production. So that means the less use of chemicals, or less use of water, less use of heavy machinery on land, all this to improve the productivity level of the field and also to improve the livelihood of farmers or improve their income level. So that is the, this all comprises or these factors all combine to, towards the agricultural digital revolution. And how we are managing this uh, how we are playing a part in this digital drive is by using our technologies, that is the satellite coupling, the satellite-based imagery, the satellite-based data, which is the imagery, and combining it with uh, precision agricultural methods, meaning the agronomic practices, the, our data of agronomic practices, and feeding those data with additional uh, technologies such as uh, AI-based models, artificial intelligence models, and machine learning techniques to enhance the decision-making process. So this in turn helps our farmers to make better decisions on in, in terms of the soil preparation, or let's say in terms of predicting the harvest period, or in terms of uh, applying the fertilizers to the field. So we have a meaningful platform, a, a ready-made, a standard product in which we are able to deliver this from these solutions, these benefits to the farmers and other agricultural stakeholders. So before we dive into the uh, one of our 
standard products, EOS crop monitoring platform, I would also like to briefly touch on some current challenges that we have observed in both developing and developed, uh, even the developed economies. So in terms of the agricultural, digital agriculture adoption in countries, we have observed that mainly there are three factor, five factors, five conditions which affect the, the quick adoption. So the, the most common factor, the more, most common reason that we have observed is that there is a low uptake of technology, meaning the low acceptance of technology by farmers and further leading to a lack of a smart approach, meaning a smart analysis of the data or the technology resources available to the farmers. Second, the, due to the increasing global warming, uh, which is, in that, which is caused, actually caused by the deforestation and the pollution happening all around the world, this change, the global warming is leading to climatic changes and the climatic changes are affecting the various phenomena, natural phenomena that occurs on, at the earth's surface level and the global atmospheric level, such as rainfall, temperature and humidity level. So these factors or these par parameters, these are very important for a crop's life cycle, meaning to exactly determine how the crop will grow or how, what should be the proper timing of the planting and so on. So this affects the farmer's decision-making ability to, you know, if they want to prepare the soil before planting the seeds or the saplings, or if they want to, let's say, plant seeds or provide harvesting or irrigation supply to the farms, this, uh, this climatic change is affecting their decision-making ability. Third, there are three main nutrients which are necessary for plants growth or crops growth, namely nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So th there, is, there are chances that there is, in some cases, there, are, there is a deficiency of these nutrients, which, can, which leads to improper plant growth or poor quality of the harvest. So it is difficult to track this nutrition deficiency. And also it is difficult to track specifically that what, what is the, which nutrient is deficient in the crops. Fourth, one, also there is one uh, a common cause like what we have observed is the weed growth, meaning the growth of wild plants across the field. So the growth of wild plants across the field, what they do is that they absorb the excess or the nutrients which are present in the soil. And this makes the, the crop uh, receive less nutrients, meaning that it creates a condition of nutrition, uh, nutrition deficiency for the crops. And lastly, in relation to the technology adoption, it is also noticed that in farmlands, which are normally mostly located in the rural regions, it is also observed that there is a connectivity issues, which forms a barrier to the adoption of technology. So these are mainly the five conditions which are actually uh, hampering or trying to uh, delay the adoption of digital agri uh, agriculture all around the world. A quick solution for this is adopting uh, what we have sought is that as a company which is, uh, which is uh, into the development of satellite based technology for the agriculture sector, a quick solution what we have sought is um, implementing partnerships, regional partnerships with uh, you know, major companies like Recton so that we can offer extend our solutions and also uh, rely on the expertise of our partners uh, with respect to their market reach and their capabilities within that market. So now coming to uh, how do we monitor space, uh, farms from space? So this diagram shows you a basic structure of what is the process that happens and what kind of data we collect and what are the parameters that we use to bring out the benefits uh, to the agricultural stakeholders. So starting with satellite data, there are different uh, remote sensing satellites which are dedicated for agricultural monitoring. Uh, one of the most commonly heard satellite for agricultural monitoring is Sentinel satellites. So Sentinel satellites and Landsat, uh, these sat we collect data from these satellites. And what we do is that we collect the data from different agronomic practices meaning the, the known agronomic practices through our research and also from uh, public sources. 
and combine it with uh, artificial intelligence models by implement deploying the algorithms and feed additional data related to weather and the soil parameter to determine the outcome, to determine the various aspects of the crop growth. So within this uh, box, you can see the various aspects, what we determine, what we calculate using these data, like vegetation growth, water stress, meaning the level of water in the plants, the nitrogen concentration, weather risks, soil moisture, field productivity, uh, variable rate maps, pest infestation, crop growth stages, and all these data, these parameters are stored in a further in a developed cloud storage system, which forms as a basis, a storage space to provide the solution, provide the data over our platforms, that is the crop monitoring platform, and provide these benefits to the users of the platform. So as a result of let's say qualitative analysis or the, as a result of these calculated parameters through our platform, we are able to provide to the user, the platform users, uh, an, a, an increase in yield, reduction in the cost of inputs, inputs as in seeds, fertilizers, and even water supply, better harvest, better farm management, control on chemical usage, saving of time, and increase in the land value of the farmers. So next I will dive into uh, this, some, the presentation on our crop monitoring platform, EOS crop monitoring platform. So I have collected some slides from the platform which, uh, the, which depict the most interesting features on the platform, the ones which uh, are which provide directly provide the benefits to the user of the platform. So showing you the first interface uh, of this platform. Uh, this platform, EOS Crop Monitoring, it provides a single stop or a, it, it acts as a single platform to integrate different types of data, data which are related to the vegetation that is the crop which are denoted with some parameters such as vegetation indices. For example, this in this interface, you can notice a name of a vegetation index called MSAVI, which stands for Modified Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index. So like the, likewise, there are three more vegetation indices which are integrated to the platform as, a, as in the standard product, which helps in determining the, the, the status of the vegetation. So MSAVI, for example, is used to identify the status of crop growth or the vegetation during the early stages of planting, meaning when the plant size is small, when the germination is process is happening, if you want to assess the level of the crop growth, MSAVI index is more useful. Then there are other types of indices available on the platform, which helps us in determining uh, the level of nitrogen concentration or the, the possibility of yellowing of leaves, etc. Then, Within the same interface of the platform, we also provide uh, weather data to, in order to compare or correlate the vegetation status with the weather impacts, like the maximum temperature or the minimum temperature over a day, or the precipitation uh, that has uh, recorded in that region, in this microclimate region of the field over a particular day. And on the interface, as you can notice, we have a legend provided here, which helps in, which helps in understanding the, the, the data interpretation of the vegetation index. We have designed the legend, the interpretation mode in this manner, in the form of a color scheme, so that even a user, platform user, who does not have much uh, experience or knowledge of agronomic uh, studies, he can also understand what is the level of vegetation, what is the status of vegetation by simply comparing the values of each parameter on the basis of the color. Moving forward, other features which are more very interesting and useful for agricultural uh, and farm owners. Uh, one of them is field leaderboard. It is a feature which displays all the fields, all the farms that are added to this platform and it helps in sorting the fields according to the different parameters or different filters, I would like to say. So those filters are mostly like the type of crops or the reporting date 
or the index value. So as you can see, this is a list of fields which is present in the platform, uh, which is saved in this platform. And the user of this platform can also download this list in the form of PDF or an Excel sheet format for record keeping purposes. So this basically saves time of the user, saves time for the farmers that they don't need to track the farms one by one, or they don't need to spend too much time on a farm. They can simply log into this platform and see for themselves what is the status of the farm as per the index values. Then talking about the weather details, there is an extended weather information uh, section on the platform which displays the historical weather and the weather forecast for the next two, 14 days. Under historical weather, we display uh, certain graphs which depict the accumulated precipitation, the daily precipitation, uh, daily temperatures, and some of active temperatures. All these graphical representations helps in determining uh, the suitability of crop as these are related to the historical weather data. It helps us to understand what is the suitability of the crop or suitability of the, the land in terms of the weather pattern occurring in that region. Whereas the weather forecast gives us more insight on what is the expected precipitation in the next two weeks, what could be the expected wind speed or the humidity percentage in the next two weeks. This is one of the interesting features available on our platform called zoning, or we also call it as variable rate application maps. This feature is basically used to find out or estimate the level of nitrogen, the effect of nitrogen on the plant's growth. So as you can see here, this, is, this interface is showing the result of a variable rate application map calculation. And the green color zones, this is a field with a defined boundary and the green color zones on the field within this field indicates higher level of nitrogen or the nitrogen concentration or higher growth level of crops in terms of nitrogen concentration. Whereas the red color zones and orange color zones indicate lower uh, vegetation zone or lower nitrogen concentration zones. So the same result in numerical format is also available here indicating what is the percentage of the field, area percentage of the field that comes under high vegetation zone and lower vegetation zone. This concept, this calculation is called uh, variable rate application uh, maps, which is used to determine the level of nutrients, level of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Then the next two slides will show you what are the FAM management uh, based farm activities based features available on our platform. This is called, this feature is called, this is the interface for scout tasks. So scout task is a feature which is used to um, organize scout activities, meaning that if the platform user wants to uh, organize like field inspection, or let's say a, a inspection, a general inspection of the field or any on any section, or let's say, on any problematic areas of the field. The platform user can simply go to the scout task feature on the platform and set the task and assign it to a scout or a person who's responsible to work on the field or let's say uh, go and do the inspection. And complementary to our platform, we also have a mobile application with the same name EOS Crop Monitoring. It can be downloaded from Google Play Store or App Store depending on the smartphone the person is using. And the purpose of assigning the scout task to a certain assignee email address is to notify the person about this task and set a date and you know, a proper recording or reporting feature uh, that can be in incorporated further in this platform for re further record keeping purposes. Then lastly, there is one team management feature available on the platform, which enables the platform user uh, to allocate uh, responsibilities or assign them fields according to the responsibility of the person. Meaning that if you, have, if you are an organization with more than 100 employees and uh, some employees are responsible to take care of uh, a certain number of fields or let's say a particular zone of your region, then you can assign the responsibility by uh, allotting them uh, a certain number of fields, one field or uh, multiple number of fields and uh, send them an invitation. So 
you have to add their email address, assign the, e the fields, and assign them a particular role based on your preference, whether they are somebody who's, uh, who is an take, uh, admin of the field, or let's say if they are a scout, or if they are just an observer for the field. So once this invitation goes to the email address of your team members from the email inbox, they are able to click on the invitation link and get access to the platform. And there is no limit on the number of such team members or the users to whom you can give access. Next, I would like to also, I would also like to tell you some use, uh, tell you about some use cases from some uh, two of our customers. One of them is a customer and second one, uh, Paddy Field in Nigeria. It belongs to one of our customers, Olam International. And second use case, oil palm trees in Malaysia. It is, um, I would not say it is directly from a customer, but it is more related to a POC and research work that we did. So here you can notice uh, an image of the field. This is the image, the satellite process satellite image of a field indicating different vegetation status on the field, meaning that this green color zones indicate the presence of crops, the vegetation and the red, uh, red and yellow color zones indicate the presence, uh, presence of less uh, vegetation or let's say perhaps inorganic substances showing us red or yellow shade. So the outcome, this, was, this is a case study that we had used case that we have collected from Olam International. And uh, they reported to us that since the introduction of US crop monitoring platform, they were able to get regular satellite images. And also they were able to track the changes in vegetation, particularly in the early stages of planting. So these two images are collected at the early stages of planting of a paddy field rice. As you can see this section of this image, this section of the field, here you can notice orange color. But after a few days, when the next satellite image was available, we can notice that this section has green color indicating the growth of vegetation or presence of plants, uh, crops in this area. So with this, our client was able to determine their, the practice that they followed to for the early stages for the differential seeding and the fertilizing activity was successful. Further, using the platform, they were also able to uh, assess the level of moisture or the level of water supply to the field. As you can see, three images collected on different three different dates. On 24th of Jan, we have a representation of the moisture level present in the field. After two weeks, on 8th of February, 2022, this current year, they observed high level of moisture, meaning that the watering or the irrigation practice done on the field was good. But suddenly after five years, uh, five days, the level of water, the moisture level in the field was less, noted to be less than the, pre the five days back. So this indicates a lack of irrigation or perhaps lack of precipitation that occurred in that region. So this gives them the necessary insight or the, or let's say the advisory from the platform that they need to make sure that sufficient water supply goes to the field for the proper growth of plant. Second use case that I have, it is related to oil palm trees in Malaysia. This is more about identifying the lack of nitrogen. So as you can see two images, these two images are from two different dates with a gap of around five to 10 days. On the left image, we have used an index called NDRE, Normalized Difference Red Edge, which is used to identify the level of nitrogen and also helps in determining the, the onset of harvesting period. Whereas on the right image, right side image, we have used an index called RECI, Red Edge Chlorophyll Index, which also helps in determining the level of nitrogen. But in comparison to NDRE, res, uh, RECI or RECI, it gives us more insight into the level of nitrogen present in the intricate plants or parts of the plant, meaning in the, in the stem shoots and in the leaves of the plants. So thereby this index is useful in determining uh, the yellowing of leaves or when we talk about oil palm trees, the yellowing of fronds on the oil palm trees. So which indicates the lack of nutrient to the, 
to the to the basic or the in depth parts of the purpose. Now we look into who are the beneficiaries of this solution, like a platform like EOS Crop Monitoring. Who could be the beneficiaries of this platform, or whom we can focus on, like to to provide advisory or to provide uh, give out the benefits or the data or the report or advisory. So we have summed up four types of beneficiaries: smallholder farmers, commercial growers, government agencies, and financial services providers. When we talk about smallholder farmers and commercial growers, we see that. Through this solution, through our partnership with Rectone, we should be able to educate the small holding farming communities in Malaysia and the commercial growers in Malaysia with the data available on the platform, such as the historical weather data, the soil conditions, uh, the vegetative analysis available on the platform, and even some farm activities based features, which can be useful to save, uh, arrange scouting activities and uh, save time. When it comes to government agencies, it's more about the efficiency of using the platform over a large area of farmlands. So meaning that using this platform, it is possible to track a large area of farmlands, which compared to the conventional methods, which was being used by, you know, mostly the government agencies in most of the, in some of the countries, it used to take a lot of time and the accuracy level was also being affected. So with the help of platforms like EOS crop monitoring, we are able to provide the government agencies with the, you know, with the ease of using, or with the ease of getting data related to the crops that they want to monitor, or if they would like to assess the effectiveness of the policies that they are determining for certain regions, they would, they should be able to track it using the platform. Then, an additional uh, vertical that is open to us that may can become, uh, you know, useful or let's say. Uh, become a beneficiary of our solution is financial services provider, especially the companies, the finance companies, which are involved with providing crop insurance to the farmers or crop insurance to the growers. Uh, they need to track the status of the, uh, of the crops. They need to track the status of the agricultural practices being carried out in the field in order to determine what should be the, the level of premium or the, let's say the amount of loan that needs to be apply, uh, approved for that particular farmer or grower. So there also we see an opportunity that financial service providers can also take benefit of EOS crop monitoring platform. Then a uh, quick info about our partnership with Rectone. So our partnership actually started in late, uh, by the end of 2021. We understood, we identified that we have a common goal to uh, promote digital agriculture solutions in Malaysia and even wider Southeast Asian region. And the capabilities that we offer from both sides, if we so talk about EOS data analytics, we have our expertise in satellite imagery analytics using the artificial intelligence and big data algorithms. So we are able to provide our solutions, um, efficient solutions and uh, workable models to Rectone. Using that, uh, using our solutions, Rectone, uh, we believe that Rectone can use the telecom capabilities through which they can share the information to the farmers, to the growers, and as we saw in the previous slide to the government agencies and even the financial services provider. So we see two ways of promoting the solution in, in particular in Malaysia, like you can simply say the vertically share the information via their telecom capabilities, via their uh, connectivity and horizontally via uh, their ability to establish local representatives and uh, direct users of the, of the solutions. Then further, the information can be shared with the farmers in many different ways. Uh, it could be, it could be, for an example, through with the help of the data service that Redtone can provide through their infrastructure. It could be through uh, a subscription model, uh, some sort of subscription model uh, through that through which Redtone can provide the services. Then. 
on the basis of our understanding uh, of the market in Malaysia, uh, Rathon and us, we have decided that what should be the proper way or the service packages that we can offer to the customers in Malaysia. So we have, op, uh, we have designed the three packages, namely essential, pro, stands for professional and premier package, depending on the level of support the customers may require. So this solution basically combines our EOS crop monitoring, the satellite-based analytics solutions and the hardware or the IoT sensor-based solutions offered by Redtone. It's a combination of these two solutions, which will, which we aim to, you know, extend to the customers to the in Malaysia, and the packages, the level of support will depend on the demand, the requirements of the customers. Like for instance, if the customers will require an online agronomy or a service advisory, then they should opt for a pro service, and if they require an additional reporting, periodic reporting services, then they should opt for a premium service package. So more details you can collect from Red Tone, like the, your personal manager or the contact person from Red Tone. You can contact them for more details on the service packages. Then, as we approach the, the final slides of this presentation, I would also like to talk about some custom solutions. We call it as custom solutions because in this kind of solutions, we deploy a high expertise, meaning that along with satellite data, we also process uh, additional types of data such as ground truthing data or data which is collected from the field level. So I would there are different solutions uh, which we consider as custom solutions, but I would talk about mainly crop classification and yield prediction because these two are the most frequently requested solutions from our customers. So crop classification is about classifying the land on the basis of the size of the field, the boundaries of the field and the crops growing on those fields. So crop classification is mostly uh, done to to, to offer, let's say, land governance or an uh, information on the land use or the crop rotation data on, on land, on a certain area of a land, which, is, which could be either on a regional level or at a field level, or a district level or a zone, a particular zone level. To, in order to get the output for the crop classification, we use the satellite images, uh, most commonly used satellite image source is Sentinel-2, which provides us with a image, satellite imagery of resolution 10 by 10 meter per pixel. And this is an example of a crop classification, just a rough example of it, like how it looks like once we do the crop classification. These are different fields with the defined boundaries and indicated with different color codes. So different color codes indicate the different types of crops growing in this field. When the real, in the real output that we uh, offer to the customers, we also provide uh, this crop classification output with a legend, which is used to identify the type of crop or the name of the crop that is growing in this region, along with the legend to select the timeline as well. So the main uses of crop classification is first of all, to identify the land governance, the use of land, and then to identify uh, which area or which zones are arable, meaning fertile zones and non-fertile zones. And what is the actual acreage of like, like for instance, if it is, let's say rice fields present, this green color fields are rice fields, then what is the total acreage of such rice fields over this region? Second custom solution is crop yield prediction or yield forecast. As the name suggests, this is basically done to uh, estimate the amount of crop that can be collected at the end of harvest. Meaning, let's say if it is a rice, rice field or a paddy field, what should be what could be the estimated amount of rice or uh, per ton basis per per hectare base, tons per hectare basis that can be collected at the end of the harvest period. So this kind of result can be estimated or calculated with the help of yield prediction solution. So here as well, we combine the satellite data based on the requirement, meaning that depending on the accuracy of the data required, accuracy of the yield prediction required, we deploy the satellite imagery from various sources 
and combine it with field statistics, which we also call as ground data. So those field statistics, uh, statistics are mostly related to the growth stages of the crop, the, the crop varieties, uh, the weather pattern over that region, and uh, the soil profile analysis. So all this data is fed into our AI model, our artificial intelligence model. And uh, we deploy our algorithms, our machine learning techniques to estimate or make the decision making process easier, meaning the, what is the amount of yield expected from that particular region. We are able to determine that using our AI models. Then lastly, I would like to also tell you about the vision of our company. So uh, the vision of our company uh, is to establish our own satellite constellation, which we have, the project is named as EOS Sat. So as now we, in our products and crop monitoring platform and uh, different platforms, we use satellite images from different data sources, but we are also aiming to be uh, independent uh, I would say independent satellite constellation owner. Like we, we are also launching our own satellite constellation in this year, 2022, uh, possibly in the second half of 2022. And with that, we aim to increase our, or enhance our capabilities and enhance our solutions that we offer to the customers. So this is our vision for 2022 and also for the upcoming years. So a quick information about this satellite constellation. Uh, with this project, we are aiming to be the first ever satellite constellation that is focused on the agriculture sector. It is going to be a constellation or a group of seven satellites equipped with optical sensors. And these are planned to be launched starting this year in 2022. By this time, we were preparing for the launch. And as you can see that we were working on the system requirements and the readiness of the launch for the launch. And uh, this year, by the second half, we will we are expecting to launch our first satellites and throughout 2024, uh, we'll be able to launch our seven optical satellites into the sun synchronous orbits. And once it is, once the satellite constellation is fully operational, then we'll be able to provide a better insight, more higher quality insights uh, on our platform and on our, through our custom solutions. That is what we are aiming for. And other benefits, what we see from our own satellite constellation is a high revisit or high, um, I would say the, the high frequency of the visit of satellites over different locations of the world. So that is also one capability which enhances our solution that we are uh, aiming to provide particularly to the agriculture sector. So the kind of benefits, the type of different benefits that we aim to achieve with the launch of our own satellite constellation are better uh, insights on the input management, meaning the fertilizer inputs, uh, better prediction of diseases and pest, predic uh, diseases and pest prediction, uh, better results with uh, better means like little more enhanced and highly accurate results of yield forecast or yield modeling. Then more additional vegetation indices and water-based indices to give more insights to the platform user. Enhanced crop classification data level, meaning the output that we can offer with the crop classification and yield modeling solution can be enhanced with more additional data and detection of arable land and field boundaries. This is also one of the custom solutions we offer. And uh, we, we also aim to enhance this solution with the, with the launch of our own satellite constellation. And additionally, we also uh, plan or we also uh, will be able to provide better decision making process on the platform, over our platform and over our solutions. That is what we look forward with uh, the launch of our EOS set satellites. So with this, I uh, end my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you found it informative. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me through my email address, brijesh.total at eos.com, or you can also contact Mr. Redza. His email address is redza.imran at redton.com. For any business inquiries, or if you would like to know more about our solutions, please feel free to reach out to us.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bridgesh. I think that was a fascinating session. Uh, Thank you. And uh, we, we look forward to working together with uh, EOS uh, over the coming uh, years. Uh, I, I think that uh, one of the reasons why uh, Red Tone has, has partnered with EOS is that we recognize that uh, in Malaysia uh, and, and even in Southeast Asia for the most part, um, the use of uh, data collection is very limited, right? Um, mm -hmm. We do not have the quantities of data that you might find in uh, the UK or the US and how they are able to do uh, their precision agriculture because they've got 20 years of data uh, uh, rather than uh, what we have right now, which is uh, almost non-existent. So um, I think one of, uh, we'll move on to our question and answer session, uh, Mr. Sure. Rajesh, with what little time we have left. Actually, we're, we're running a little bit over, but I think we can spare 10 minutes out of our lunch break uh, to actually uh, address some of these uh, questions. So uh, the first question is from Mr. Ethan Kong. What is the optimal farm size to deploy this service? So uh, th this might be a question uh, for you. I, I think I know the answer, but uh, I'll let you uh, have a go at it. Sure. Thank you, Ethan, for the question. Uh, well, the optimal farm size would depend on the level of data that you want to extract or level of data that analysis that you want to get. But I would say with my uh, experience overall, uh, that if you are referring to getting, uh, let's say, the farm data on the platform, EOS crop monitoring platform, the optimal size would be anything like starting from one hectare. But again, uh, with our standard offering, with the standard product, what we offer is satellite imagery with a resolution of 10 by 10 meter per pixel. We also have the possibilities to integrate uh, satellite imagery from different sources, providing you much fine resolution. So in that case, then the optimal size of the farms can be, you know, uh, we can consider even smaller sizes of farms, uh, which can be monitored and you can get the different analytics uh, for your, uh, you know, reporting or advisory uses. Thank you. Uh, I think another thing to, to note is uh, one of the things that uh, Red Tone is looking to uh, introduce is uh, the practice of actually collecting data on the farm as well, and then integrating that uh, with uh, our remote sensing, uh, our remote uh, satellite-based uh, data, right? So. Uh, the use of IoT and integrating it with our satellite data, th this is uh, where the value add comes from, uh, from this partnership. And uh, we can move on to our next uh, question uh, from Ms. Mr. Izatul. Uh, he's asking, uh, and I think it's a very technical question, I don't know whether you can answer it or not, uh, Bridesh. Sunspots can interfere with the smooth transition of satellite radio. How is, it, how is it dealt with? Well, that's very techy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be able to give you, uh, you know, a, a right answer, a right reasoning for it. But I can tell you one thing that uh, if the question is related to if sunlight affects the, the performance of satellites, then the satellites are actually made of special materials. So which are... Those materials, like I can name a few, like, like graphite, uh, even Teflon. Uh, these are some special materials which are used to manufacture satellites. So these are uh, these materials are well researched and sought after to avoid the complications with any other external factors, like even sunlight. Uh, but uh, I think I do need to check with our technical team about this, like to get a little more insight about whether there will be any external effects uh, specifically through the sunlights or not, but this is yeah. my understanding, the knowledge that I have regarding the satellite, uh, the structure of the satellite and the technology on which it works. Sure. Uh, okay, another question for you, uh, Rajesh. Uh, what is the use case of IoT sensors that was shown in the package slide? Uh, how does it complement uh, remote sensing? I, th I think uh, we've covered this uh, previously. 
yeah. where uh, you know the the whole point of it is to actually um, gather data not only from the satellite but also uh, the soil, the actual soil on the ground data. Right, I think uh, it's very important for us to start this uh, this database uh, so that in the future we are able to actually predict what's going to happen on the farm and uh, use this very localized knowledge to improve the yield of our farmers, to reduce their costs and to make them much, much more efficient. Uh, right. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> This is a question which is more related to the hardware part. Right. So I think you would know more than me. But anyhow, but what you said, I, I completely agree with it. And yes, it is true that, yes, uh, the, coming to the usage of the IT, IoT sensors and how it will be combined with the software part, uh, it will, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think we've got time for another two questions. How, sure. will, how will small farmers benefit from satellite technology if they have small plots of land and uh, plant a variety of crops? Well, that depends on the type of solution that we aim to provide. So uh, smallholder farmers, specifically, we know that not just in Malaysia, but even in some other parts of the world, like let's say in India or even in Africa, we have smallholder farming communities who have an average size of the plot or the farm less than one hectare. So even in those cases, as I mentioned, we can provide, deploy different satellite images, different sources of data sources to ensure that still you get the, you know, the necessary analytics on the, on our platforms. Uh, the next question uh, is, yellowing of leaves is not always a result of nitrogen deficiency. I think this is in, in response to your uh, slide just now on uh, palm oil. Sometimes yes. disease infection can also cause yellowing. How would it be possible to tell one from the other? Well, that is something which will have to be confirmed additionally. Like it is true, the statement is true that it, it could not be just lack of nitrogen why the yellowing of leaves may occur or the yellowing of the fronds of oil palm trees may occur. It could also be due to the pest infestation. So for that reason, on our platform, if we had more time then I could have also showcased our platform, but we do have additional tools present on the platform, which enables you to compare other, uh, you know, let's say the vegetation indices with other factors as well, with other parameters as well which helps you to zero out the possible cost. So if it is not because of the lack of nitrogen, it could also be, as you said, mentioned because of the pest diseases, or it could be due to the effect of weather, the impact of yeah. weather as well. That yeah. is also, sometimes it may happen that we will observe yellowing, uh, yellow color on the field map. I think this is important to note that uh, perhaps uh, in the Malaysian context, we do not have enough uh, experience in using these type of technologies uh, to actually uh, determine whether it is because of pests, because of because of disease. Uh, I think this comes with research and development of the technologies that we are talking about here. Uh, Malaysia needs to move forward in the way that we view our farmers and our growers. I think that is a very important uh, aspect that we have to uh, we have to address in order for us uh, to be able to be fully uh, self sustainable. Yeah, every year I think we have something uh, to the tune of a twenty billion ringgit deficit in food export, meaning that we consume more than we produce. And uh, it's technologies like this that is applied on a large scale that will help the government and our growers to achieve uh, better efficiencies and to actually close that gap. Yeah? By 2050, I think we're expecting to have somewhere in the region of 41 Malaysians. And uh, we will require about 70% food, uh, food production increase uh, to cater to those Malaysians. Um, one thing I would like to point out, uh, Brijesh, is that uh, you are currently in Ukraine, right? Uh, yes, I report yes. to one of our representative offices in Ukraine. Uh, okay. As I mentioned in one of our slides, we have a research and development unit 
yeah. located in Eastern Europe. So that is in Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we hope that I, I'm sure everyone here is praying for the swift conclusion of the war and uh, uh, for you to remain safe. Yeah. Uh, Thank I you. think I, I think uh, we are running out of time. Uh, I would like to uh, probably give a note to all our attendants, uh, attendees today. Uh, Red Tone will actually be running a, a special uh, promotion for our uh, government agencies. Uh, we have been working together with several government agencies over the past few years. And uh, with a few of them, we have already talked about the possibility of deploying uh, the EOS solution uh, in line with uh, Red Tone's IoT devices uh, to actually uh, create a proof of concept for them. Yeah. And uh, we do hope that there will be other government agencies and uh, organizations that will reach out to us uh, to see how we can apply this on a large scale. Uh, we are already doing it with our small scale farmers. So for example, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is to bundle uh, this service along with our uh, irrigation and fertigation, smart irrigation, smart fertigation systems. And uh, I think that's something that will uh, evolve as we go along. So uh, again, Bridges, thank you so much for your time. I know it's a bit early there. Uh, it's, it's 6 a.m. there, I believe. And, it's uh, 7 a.m. now. It's this 7 a.m. now. Yeah, yeah, the timing so, was very comfortable for me. Thank so, you very so much. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, to our attendees, thank you so much uh, for your time and your attention. Uh, we will be coming back at 2 p.m. for our first plenary session of the day uh, that is entitled Ag Tech Financing and Insurance, the Catalyst of Digital Farming. Uh, I will be joined, I will be the moderator for that session, and I will be joined by my esteemed panelists, uh, Mr. S Mr. Navin Sinatambi, Head of Digital Ag Tech Sectorial Projects and Drone Tech from MDAC Malaysia. Uh, I will also be joined by Encik Muhammad Taufik Muhammad uh, Zakaria, Chief Sustainability and Transformation Officer of AgroBank, and uh, Mr. Hideki Obata. Uh, General Manager of the Food and Agri-Business Planning Division from Norinchukin Bank of Japan. So I hope that our attendees will come back after lunch, have a good lunch, you know, uh, and come back, get comfortable. We'll have a very, very good discussion session after this. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Once again, we'll see you at 2 p.m. Come back maybe five minutes before. And uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Radza. Thank you. Thank you, Brijesh.